Hey y'all. Today I'm going to talk about a baboon, specifically the olive baboon. These baboons are found on a belt across Central Africa, both in forested and grassland habitats, all the way from Mali to Ethiopia. They can be distinguished from other baboons by their olive brown fur and skin, and their comparatively reduced ischial callosities. The typical specimen weighs between 15 and 25 kilos, with males being substantially larger than females. They're versatile omnivores eat almost everything. Before I continue, I'd like to give a shout out to Primate Appreciator on Instagram, who pitched in a dash of help in the research for this video. Like me, they spread information about specific primates, but in a less pedantic manner than I do, so you definitely go follow them. I'd also like to shout out Dr. Nancy Shefferly from the University of Wisconsin. I'm not from Wisconsin, as you can probably tell from my accent, and I have never met her in my life, but she wrote the source I got most of this information from. It was a great source from a pretty basic website, something that I don't see very often, and that deserves a shout out. Now let's get going. Olive baboons, like all baboons, are adapted mainly for life on the ground. They are one of two lineages of primates that can honestly be called cursorial, or adapted in the conventional manner for running, the other being the potus monkeys. Cursorial animals tend to have narrow, aerodynamic shoulders, deep chests, and relatively lightweight shanks and forearms. This is obviously distinct from the running adaptations seen in humans and chimpanzees, which have barrel chests and powerful calves for running. Baboons have small hands, with shorter fingers than other primates, probably to avoid injury during running and they walk on the balls of their feet. Uniquely among primates, the long head of the baboon's triceps muscle is split into two bellies, probably another running adaptation. After humans, baboons are the sweatiest primates in the world, allowing the thermoregulate very efficiently on the dry, hot plains of Africa. There are two subspecies, or ugh, subfamilies, my mistake, of monkey in the old world. Baboons belong to the Cercopithecine subfamily, which is distinguished by having pouches in the cheeks in which to store food. However, in baboons, these pouches have been reduced to a very small size. Such reversals are common in evolution, such as the human hind leg or the teeth of horses. It's thought that baboon cheek pouches are reduced both through the genetic factors and through lack of use, because as large primates, the role of the cheek pouches in starch consumption is less important, and they can simply eat their food immediately with similar results. All of baboons have the smallest ischial callosities of the baboons. Unlike the large pink rump of the Hamadryas baboon, they are small and brown in all of baboons. Baboons of all species do not develop their distinctive and large canine teeth until puberty. Males grow for a longer time than females do. The olive baboon is less patriarchal than the Hamadryas baboon, although it still does have a strongly male-dominated society. Male monkeys have a strict hierarchy based on power. In the wild, females typically do not have this structure, though in captivity they may have developed one. Instead, females' hierarchy is related to their ancestry, and they inherit their mother's status except during large disturbances. Like in most monkeys, females will practice motherhood with their younger siblings and their nieces and nephews. The female olive baboon is just as aggressive as the male one towards a baboon she is unfamiliar with. The female baboon produces a special scent when ovulating that draws in males when they are close enough to smell it, and drives her to become more receptive to those males. Male olive baboons will form gangs together in quasi-political structures and team up to take down other males. Older males are more active in the game of teaming up, especially with males they have known for a long time, while younger ones tend to be the lone wolf type. Males are the ones that leave immediately during maturity. Olive baboons have a complex set of facial expressions and actions that they use to communicate. For example, tooth grinding is a sign of aggression, while tooth chattering is used to reassure one's compatriots in stressful situations. They also make some of the most extensive vocalizations among primates, including a grating, roar-like cry that sounds a bit like this. All baboons except the Hamadryas baboon are considered polygenandrous, as opposed to simply polygenous, and do not herd females to prevent them from mating with other males. However, they do direct aggression towards other male baboons. This stark behavioral difference has led to many suggestions that the Hamadryas baboon may be less related to other baboons. However, it appears that they are actually more closely related to olive baboons than to other baboons. There exist hybrid olive baboons in the wild, which behaviorally resemble whichever species they grew up amongst. The hybrids are more often than not fertile, which raises the question as to whether different types of baboons can really be considered separate species. The olive baboon is privileged among primates, not being endangered. Adaptable and intelligent, its ability to survive in both plains and forest habitats means it is probably going to fare better than other primates in the coming years of climate change. 
However, if you want to help curb climate change, you can engage in the usual measures such as cutting down your red meat intake, shopping locally, joining political protests, and the like.